will now continue with a short explanation of the following. The Alessian Order, the Cult of the Ancestor Moth, the Cult of Emperor Zero, and a brief explanation of the Second Empire. The Alessian Order. This monotheistic religion was once very popular, but today only remnants of its faith remain. It started in the coastal jungle of what is now the Colovian West, where a prophet named Maruk, who had spoken to the Enlightened One, Saint Alessia, began to question the validity of elven rule. These sentiments led to an increasingly abstract and unknowable depiction of a single god. The Alessians were wise enough to realize that they had to incorporate the ancient polytheistic elements into their new religion for to find a wide acceptance. The divine aspects worshipped by the various humans and Ald Mary were recognizable in the guise of the myriad saints and spirits of the evolving Alessian canon. It wasn't long before the order was the authority on every religion in Tamriel, and their power grew to earth-shaking proportions. Nearly a third of the first era passed under their theocratic rule. When its priesthood had become too widespread to support itself, the order began to fight amongst itself. With the severance of the territories of West Cyrodiil from the Empire, too much money and land had been lost. A war of righteousness broke out, and the order, which had almost ruled the world, undid itself in a 10 year span. The Cult of the Ancestor Moth For long the Syro Nordics had exported ancestor silks to other regions, simple yet exotic shawls woven from the silks of an indigenous gypsy moth and inscribed with the requisite genealogy of its buyer. Under the cult however ancestor and moth became synonymous. The singing and hymnal spirits of one's forebears are caught in a special silk gathering ritual, the resource of which is used to create any manner of vestment or costume. The swishing of this material during normal movement reproduces the resplendent ancestral cores contained therein. It quickly became a sacred custom among the early Nibbanese, which has persisted to this day. Monks of the higher orders of the cult of the ancestor moth are able to forego the magical ritual needed to enchant this fabric, and indeed prefer to wear the moths about the neck and face. They are able to attract the ancestor moths through the application of finely ground bark dust gathered from the gypsy moth's favourite tree and through the sub-vocalisation of certain mantras. They must chant the mantras constantly to maintain skin contact with the ancestor moths, a discipline that they endure for the sake of some cosmic balance. When a monk interrupts these mantras in conversation, for example, the moths burst from him in a glorious fashion every time he speaks, only to light back up upon his skin when he resumes the inaudible chant. The Cult of Emperor Zero This cult, started by Tiber Septim himself, was established in the honour of the great Kula Cain. The Emperor Zero. Though Kula Kain did not technically recapture all of Cyrodiil's holdings during his time, he is worthy of worship for the wisdom he showed in appointing Talos as his general, and the bravery he showed when retaking the Imperial City. Two events that were crucial in restoring the glory of the new Cyrodiilic Empire. He is therefore to be remembered in our prayers. The topiary mages have begun to shape his aspect in the palace gardens, where in the future Kula Kain may share his insights with Tiber Septum in the same manner as the rest of the Blessed Hedry heads of Garden Emperor Ro. The Second Empire The Second Empire is divided into two stages, the Raman Dynasty and the Akaviri Potentate. As mentioned in the text, after the Akaviri raiders had been defeated, Raman recruited many of them into his service. Later, Cyrodiil's traditionally kept a house guard of Akaviri and the Emperor's chief advisor, the Potentate, was usually of Akaviri descent. Administrative structures of the Second Empire, as well as in the training of its military. The reconstructed Imperial Legions, which learned an unparalleled measure of coherence, logistics and discipline from the Akaviri, began to easily overwhelm other regional armies. Soon every region in Tamriel belonged to Cyrodiil, except for Morrowind. After the assassination of Raman's last heir by the dark elven Morag Tong during the disastrous Four Score War, control of the Empire reverted to the Akaviri Potentate. They left a visible mark on the Empire of today. The high crafts of Daikatanas and dragon scale armour come from the Akavir, as did the banners and the military dress of Septim's shock troops, the Blades. 
The red dragons that have come to represent the Empire and the Imperial City were originally Akaviri warmounts. Akaviri surnames are rare and prized possessions among the Cyrodiilic citizenry of today, and there are trace facial features of the Akaviri in many distinguished Cyrodiilic families. Some colonies of true Akaviri still exist in both the Empire and its border regions, but they are named so only for their practices and customs rather than for the purity of their blood.